I'm gonna try that again later. Oh. Now I know why you want me to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the word time. It's time for the word. Woo! Yes, that's so exciting. Um, you know, I remember sitting in, in church when I was a little younger, and the word time was like the scariest time for me. Like I felt like it was about to be the time that I was just about to get beat over the head with the Bible. <laughs> Every toe was about to be stepped on, and I just was gonna feel like complete crap after leaving because the Bible like hurts me. <laughs> That's how I felt. That's how I used to feel. But today we're actually going to talk about the word, well, we're going to talk about encouraging, encouragement. And that is so relieving to me to know that there's a word that can encourage me. There's a people in, in Christ, there's a church, a place that can encourage me. So if y'all will join me as I welcome our lead pastor, Pastor Tony Moore. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you're encouraged. I hope when you leave every week you're encouraged. Um, the word is, I'm going to scoot this back a little bit. Um, the word is, does the word hurt sometimes? Sometimes. Woo. Sometimes it does. It's uncomfortable. Oh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> like you might hear it in an attic somewhere. <laughs> feels no. like a shot through the heart sometimes. Yeah. You, you guys who missed Tuesday night at um, TH University, and by the way, TH University is our discipleship class. We do dis discipleship in different ways. We One of the ways we do discipleship is in a class weekly um, for six weeks at a time. So Jen's leading that ministry. And um, so last week was in an attic, I hear. Very cool. Actually, uh, part of what we're going to talk about today it has to do with persecuted church, um, but it's going to be, this is going to be awesome. Remember when we first started this, this um, series, Pastor Chris told us that this series is going to be awesome. Every week is going to be awesome, Every, and we started this upgrade series where we're upgrading our relationships and talking about how we become better friends, um, better family members, better ministers, better community members, how we, how we um, <coughs> accept better people into our lives. And, and some people walk away, some people stay. Anyway, uh, I hope throughout the series um, you found that, that every week has been something that, that you could use. We only have two weeks left. And then we'll be starting our Christmas series. Um, next week, Pastor Amber is going to be speaking, finally. Again, we've been missing her for a long time now. And then the next week will be our Thanksgiving service, and then we'll start Christmas. Yay. Are you ready? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Hopefully today, when we when we look at the scripture, today is we're continuing the mini series that's part of our upgrade series. The mini series is the Barnabas effect. Um, so we're doing part two of that. Anybody tell me what Barnabas means? Encourager. 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 Son of light or son of encourage. That's right. Son of light or son of encouragement. Um, so. Uh, what the Bible says that the reason that they called, what was his original name? <laughs> trick question. It's not a trick question. You really oh. it. It starts with a J. I don't even remember. What was it? Joseph? Joseph, the Levite from Cyprus. Okay. Um, he was Joseph. <laughs> um, and they changed his name to Barnabas because he was such an encourager. Um, and so we're going to see the other time that he's mentioned in the Bible today. Um, but, but what we're talking about is, is the Apostle Paul. Because we're in the book of Acts, and so far in the book of Acts, we haven't come to Paul. 
because we've been talking about Peter and Jesus' disciples. Well, now, if you know the story of Saul, who became Paul, he was not a believer in Jesus. He was a um, very devout Jew, and he was very anti-Christ, very anti-Christian, to the point that he was a real persecutor of the church. I mean, like, he made them drink out of red cups with no snowflakes and everything. And, um, <laughs> no. He actually killed them. He actually had Christians put to death. That's persecution. Um, and kind of the point of the lesson on Tuesday was there is real persecution and not everything that comes along that makes you uncomfortable is persecution. Anyway, so Paul was one of those who actually persecuted Christians to the point of having them put to death. But he had an encounter with Jesus. And most of you here probably know that when you have an encounter with Jesus, it kind of changes your perspective about everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Paul got knocked off his horse, literally, and had an encounter with Christ and became a believer. How can you not believe in somebody who's standing there talking to you? So he became a believer, and um, so in the scripture that we're going to read today, we're in chapter 9 of the book of Acts. If you want to turn there, or scroll there, or write it down and look it up later, Acts chapter 9. At this point, um, when Paul became a believer, he was in the city of Damascus, and the Christians there... The Jews there, who he had been working with to eliminate Christians, when he became a Christian, the Jews wanted to put him to death. Now he became the persecutor, whose persecutor became the persecuted, and they were trying to put him to death, but the Christians there helped him escape. So he left Damascus and went back to Jerusalem. So we're picking the story up there, Acts chapter 9, verse 26. says, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Um, he's a Christian. He has left, he has left the persecute, he, he has left the band of persecutors of Christians and become a Christian, and now the Christians don't want him to be one of them because they don't believe he's really changed. But Barnabas, here he comes, but Barnabas took Paul and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Um, so, what, um, what Barnabas did for, for Saul Paul, his name was Saul, God changed it to Paul. Okay, everybody clear on that? Um, Saul, persecutor, Paul, believer, apostle, writer of most of the New Testament. So, so when, when he comes to Jerusalem, the whole band of Christians says, no, we don't want him here. We don't, we don't want him to be part of us because we think he's just infiltrating us and he's going to, you know, he's just here to kill us. He, he's going to become a suicide bomber or something because he's not really one of us. But Barnabas, who they already knew as a man of encouragement, a man of truth and light, um, brought Paul to him and said, no, Paul in Damascus risked his own life to um, preach the gospel. So they allowed him to come in and be a part. And, and this, is, this is what I think for us, because we're talking about how we fit into the body of Christ and, and how we use our gifts and abilities outside of the church to, um, to make our community better and to spread the gospel, to, to share the good news, um, to share a good mood, whatever. 
And, and what we can see in, in Barnabas is that he saw something in Paul that the other believers didn't see. He saw the truth. He saw that, that he really was not just a believer. But we, I mean, it's easy for us because we're looking back on the story. We know the whole story of, of Paul and how, you know, he wrote all of the New Testament scriptures and how he became the missionary who went and started churches all over the world and spread Christianity to places that never would have gone without him being there and doing what he did. But the, the Christians and Barnabas didn't know all of that. Barnabas just had faith in the God in Paul. Not necessarily because he hadn't seen him do much except preach the gospel in Damascus. He hadn't seen a lot out of him. He'd only been there for a short time. So, you know, maybe he saw a week, a week's worth of sermons from Paul. But he saw something that the other people didn't see. And I wonder if, if there are any of us who are doing what we're doing now because somebody somewhere saw something in us that the other people around us didn't see. Was there something in you that if, that you might not have ever accomplished if there hadn't been a Barnabas in your life to say, hey, I believe in you. I believe in the God in you. Or maybe is there something in you now, like maybe the things that we wrote down last week and we took to the cross, is there something in you now that you want to do or you want to come out? There's some ministry or some ability that you have that God wants to use in our community that if you just had a Barnabas to come along and say, I believe in you, I believe in the God in you, I believe in the gift that God put in you, that maybe you'll be one who changes the world. Where right now you feel like, mm, I'm just a, I'm just a, in the wings kind of person. Is it possible? Because Paul saw something, or Barnabas saw something that the others didn't see. And he didn't just believe in, but he trusted God. He trusted Paul's testimony and his profession of faith. Um, I think there's, that a lot of us, maybe we know that we possess abilities, we, we possess gifts, um, talents. There are things in us that we could do. You know, the ones that, that are kind of just under the surface or maybe they're just, in, you've got them on the back burner. But, but we don't see what the purpose of them is. Does that make sense? Like, Okay, I've got this ability, but how can I ever use this ability for good? Well, what if the ability that's in you is in you so that you can help somebody else accomplish something? What if it's not really about you? What if it's not really to make you the star or put you in the spotlight? But what if it is, what if you're the Barnabas? Think about it. What if you're the one? who your, your ability is to go alongside somebody else and say, I believe in the God in you. Um, 1 Peter 4.10, I, I think is a scripture that we read at the end of last week, last week's message, and it says, each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Each of you, each of you should use your gift to serve others. Do some people get thrust into the spotlight? Do some people get all the attention? Sure. But even those people, um, their abilities, the real purpose of them is to serve. Um, you might think of some high profile Let's stay with Christians. Um, some high-profile Christian. Who, who is somebody that you think of if you think of a high-profile Christian? T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes. Okay. He's, he's uh, man, T.D. Jakes. Um, 
I've been watching T.D. Jakes forever. So he was still in Charleston, West Virginia when I first started listening to him preach. He was pastor of a small church in Charleston, and he had a TV program in that area. We lived in, in Southeast Ohio for a little while. And, um, and he was on TV there, and he was just, I mean, just amazing the word that came out of him and the way he could preach the word that really did this. I mean, he, he, at the time, he was just a pastor of a church. Now he's not just the pastor of the church, but now he leads millions of people in um, ministry and, and through the manpower events and the woman that were loose events and all the, um, what's the other one, Atlanta, Atlanta Fest, hmm. or Mega Fest, or whatever it's called, um, where people are just being empowered to do what they're called to do and what they're created to do through his, through his ministry. Now, whether you agree with everything he says or not, that doesn't even matter. He's doing what he feels like God's called him to do. That's his business. Um, so, so even as much in the spotlight as T.D. Jakes is and as much attention as he gets, he's still using that gift to serve other people. So he's doing what the scripture says. Each of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Um, so I, what I want you to do is look at that ability, the ability that you have. How can I use this ability to serve? First question we should ask, not how can I use this ability to get rich, not how can I use this ability to become famous or don't ever think how can I use this ability to get rid of all my haters, because <laughs> that's just not going to happen. It's probably the more you use it. Don't you think T.D. Jakes probably has more haters now than he had when he was, never mind. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. How can I use my abilities to serve? How can I serve? How can I serve my family? How can I serve my church? How can I serve my community? What about my coworkers? Yes, even the now, there, there's another scripture I want us to look at because I think there are a lot of people who think they're not, I don't really want to use this word, but I don't know another word to use, that they feel like they're not worthy to serve, they're not worthy to help somebody else because of whatever. And so I want us to look at scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4 and... Just two verses, verses 8 and 9. Um, <laughs> well. Second Peter. Sorry, not First Peter. Second Peter, chapter 1. We were just in First Peter 4, weren't we? Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Okay, that's not it either. Well, that's kind of it. Um, it's, uh, we'll start with verse 5. <clears throat> Starting in verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 1. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they've been cleansed from their past sins. Now, now that's a mouthful. Um, let's break it down a little bit. Because how this, how this fits with this, I believe people do not feel worthy to serve or that God could never use the abilities I have. That what I can do, God will never ever use me because of these things that we lack. Because it says if we lack these things that it told us we need, if we lack them, we're nearsighted and we're blind. 
we're, we're focused just like here, and we can't see any farther down the road than here because we lack these qualities. But it says that if we have them increase, in increasing measure, that we become productive. We become effective. Having them makes us effective and productive. And it says, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It makes us understand who Jesus is. It makes, makes us know who he is in us and who we are in him. We have a knowledge of our place and our position in him that we miss. This has nothing to do with our salvation, okay? Because it, it says that we have already have faith. We've already been given faith. But we're adding these things to our faith. My faith has saved me. I'm saved by the grace of God through faith in him. That's settled. That's done. Now that I'm in, I want to be productive and I want to be effective, right? As a believer, I want to be the best believer I can be.